Oh, hey, did you know that you can find Tequila or Wine on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Tequila or Wine? Man, I'm glad I told you, because that really would have sucked if you missed out on all the amazing content you can find there. our second episode of Tequila or Wine. This week we have amazing tequila and wine to review. The conversation continues with topics on should comedians have to apologize about things they have said in the past and what's better, going out to eat or cooking at home. Grab a bottle of tequila or wine, sit back, relax, and enjoy. This week's tequila review is Espolón Añejo Tequila. Uh, tequila Matchmaker ranks us at an 82 with the reviews coming in between 70s and 80s, um, which means it probably will be a decent tequila. Um, I'm expecting a smoother, a smoother ride with this one than last week's, um, but I'm going to actually pour it into a glass and actually sip it this time instead of taking a shot, definitely to try to get all of those aromas that I can get out of this. So um, it's 40% alcohol, 80 proof. Um, the website, tequilamatchmaker.com, came back with um, these different flavors that I could get from the smell and the taste. Butterscotch, agave, caramel, pepper, and vanilla, which is very similar to the tequila last week. This bottle comes in at a smooth $27.99 retail, um, but you can find that on sale in lots of different places. And I'm going to go ahead and do a smell test here, a smell test. Yeah, so I definitely get that butterscotch smell and the agave smell. Let's see if I can get that caramel smell. Yeah, there's a caramel there too. I'm not getting any pepper in that smell though, whatsoever, um, or the vanilla. So let me go ahead and pour this into the glass and give it a nice little sip here and see what, see what I get out of it. Oh, wow, that's actually delightful. So there's really no burn going down the throat, which is really nice. Um, and it still has that distinct tequila taste, which is delicious, um, but I do taste that butterscotch. And there is that vanilla kick when you do let it go down your throat. Um, I love this tequila. I think it's definitely something that you can go back for. Um, I'm gonna give this one a two thumbs up. I like that it didn't burn my throat going down. Um, so definitely take your time with this one, enjoy it. Maybe make it last a while. Hello guys, today I'm reviewing a Chateau Saint Michel. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's from Columbia Valley, which is in Washington. So I found this at my local liquor, liquor store for about $14.50, uh, but I've seen online it ranges from $11 to $16, and I should've gone to Costco because it's about $12 at Costco. But this one on uh, Wine Enthusiast scored an 89 out of 100, so I'm very excited to, to try this one out. Online I've seen uh, reviews from a 3.8 to about a 4.5, average is about 4.3, so overall it's, it's a highly rated wine. Um, it's a 2016 is when it was uh, fermented, so very excited about this one. So looking at it, uh, from the top and from the side, it's actually a lot more dense than the Revolution from last week. So it's, it's a very, it looks, from what I've been reading too, a very complex wine, uh, but it's a very clean wine. There's You don't get any like floaties, you don't find any uh, little bits at the bottom. It's a very clean wine overall. Uh, when I tilt it, I see minimal like water on the edge between the uh, the wine and the wine itself, but it's a lot less than what we had with the Revolution. Um, taking the smell now. Actually, it smells phenomenal. So it's a very fruity. Uh, I, I get like the hint of berries. I don't know if it's like a blackberry necessarily or what kind of berry, but it's, it's a berry flavored uh, smell. And then looking at the legs themselves, so when I spin around and look at the legs, they are fairly slow to form, um, but there's a lot of legs that form with this. So overall, it looks like it's gonna be a very quality wine. So now we get to the best part, the taste. And so looking at reviews, lots of mixed berry taste. It's very fruity, it's kind of crisp. Uh, lots of reviews saying it's a great blend. So let's give it a taste. 
So this one's a little bit more on the dry side. Um, not necessarily super bitter, but you get a little bit of the bitter, a little bit of the dry. I personally like more of a fruity than a dry, but the good thing about this one is you do get a lot of that fruit taste. So it's a very dry but fruity uh, wine. So overall, I actually like this a lot. Um, this personally, because I'm not necessarily a dry wine person, isn't my top you know, three wine overall, but I, I almost have to give this a two thumbs up just because of how well put together this wine was. Um, reading online, it looks like it pairs very well with beef, uh, with pork, with pasta. So kind of your traditional you know, Italian meals. Um, but yeah, overall, great wine, great price, two thumbs up. So thumbs, we've seen Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Kevin Hart for the Emmys, I believe. Um, they tried Dave, Dave Chappelle, they tried Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz is the latest hit. I mean, countless others. Comedians and their old jokes. What are your thoughts on that? Do They're they, coming after Tina Fey, too. Are they? Do they deserve it? 30 Rock. Do they not deserve it? Are, I thought those were the two episodes that were like blackface inspired. They were. Yeah. And here's the I, thing, I, here's I the thing and this is, how, this is how I've always felt about comedians. Do I think some of the comedians, some of the stuff that they're saying, they actually truly believe in? Fuck Maybe no. sometimes. Oh, okay. Do, sometimes, like some but of the jokes they might some of the yes. comedians like Jimmy Fallon, Kimmy, or, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, those guys, I don't think so. You know, I would every argue, every comedian crosses the line because that's what gets. So, laughs. are we talking stand up? Or are we talking like the late? So, if you want to say like the late night, what they're talking about stuff. Oh, I'm thinking versus like stand Twitter, Facebook posts, Instagram posts, stand ups. I think it's TV depends shows. on who you are. If you're a comedian, comedian. If you're a stand up, if you're a Bill Burr. Yeah, Bill Burr. He's, he's a comedian, but he's known for being a shithead. Exactly, like, that's his but role. The hard part is, is like if you're a, a Jimmy Fallon or if you're a Jimmy Kimmel, you're a late night personality. You're not a comedian. Like, yeah, yeah, you're funny. But, like, you're a personality of the late night, you know, somewhat, if you want to call it a parody of current news. But you're not, like, you're basically news to a lot of people. You're news with, like, a funny twist. So I, I think it's kind of hard to, like, put them in that same boat. But if you're, like, a stand-up, like, if you're a Dave Chappelle, where you're a stand-up guy and a stand-up guy only... And like you, you, like you are where your your skits like where you're a hundred percent for the jokes. How the fuck can you like say, oh, he would cross the line? Dave Chappelle crosses the line on everything. But that's Dave Chappelle. That's Even saying. in his most recent, like, but like Kevin Hart, same thing. So Kevin well, and then Hart, he just won the Mark Twain Award. He did. No, he. I thought he won. That Dave Chappelle ago. won. Well, there's a special on that. Or did he won a few? Yeah, that's the reason like, I know. Was, years ago. Yeah. was that years ago for it was Dave not Chappelle? This year, I don't think. Oh, well, <laughs> then I'm it was before the game. Sticks and Stones, which was like a year ago, so. Okay, well, anyway, yeah. like, no, a yeah. comedian that has been attacked for the things he says wins a big award like well, that. Well, the funniest part about Dave Chappelle, so all the editorial peoples or whoever, the, the, the dipshit reviewers who were, like, reviewed by, you know, they're, like, honored for being reviewers. They gave him, like, a fucking 38%. Round Tomatoes publicity, like the day the uh, Netflix special came out, ninety it was uh, ninety nine or one hundred percent. Yeah. So like, and actually, it was a really funny part. I don't know if it was Joe Rogan or someone else. Um, not necessarily like comedy, but like they were just talking about it. Why do we need like reviewers today? You know, like we have enough platforms where the public can review stuff, where you don't need like a reviewer of like this film. Because I feel honestly, some reviews politicized, some reviews. Just like woke aside, some reviews just like fucking whatever you can do to like make your name bigger. Like it's not even about the movie yeah. itself necessarily. It's about what can you do to make yourself a bigger name. Oh, and I totally and I don't agree think with that. that's a great review. I totally I think agree with that. Park kind of tangent, kind of not a tangent at all. So South Park has that Yelp episode. Have you ever seen that one? Yes. I think that's fucking phenomenal. That's so like I think South Park honestly is a phenomenal satire of like everyday life. Um, they make fun of both sides. They're libertarians at heart. They might be slightly more conservative. But they have very democratic views too. Um, so well, they very, they, like, they, they try to honest. piss everybody off. No, but like just in general, who they are, they're pretty unbiased. Um, slightly, 
slightly conservative, but mainly they are libertarian. They're like, hey, fuck off. Let us do our thing. Yeah. They're fairly unbiased people, but they just satire life. And you look at the 1999 episodes, you look at the 2002 episodes, you look at today's episodes, they're all still relevant. They're all still relevant. It's yeah. phenomenal stuff, but it's just, you know, how do you review stuff? Like, can't, I mean, if you, and talking about like, like, if it's an old thing that you're going to, like, backlash at, South Park, right? Yeah. So. But, I mean, getting back to the comedians aspect of it all, I don't think it's fair to the comedians to make them have to go back and be like, yeah, that was probably not something I should have said. But I don't, th- like, and I think that's fine. Yeah. They should go back and say that. But I, I think don't. It depends. I don't, I don't think we should be like, we should cancel their show. We shouldn't let them have any more yeah. specials. It's like, what they said back in the 1990s about homosexuality and well okay and so that exact point kevin hart i think it was the 2010s like 20 maybe like 2014 i it, it was earlier than it was a few years ago but he was supposed to host the oscars in 2018 yep. 29 whatever year it was um and they went back to a previous special which i watched a special and like if you like just anything kevin hart if you listen to any kevin hart stuff you know, like, that's not who he truly is. He's a family man at the core. Kevin Hart, honestly, is a phenomenal person. Yeah, he might have, like, a divorce or two. I think it's only one. Well, he's um, cheated on his wife life. a couple times. It was just one wife, though, right? Uh, and they broke yeah, up. Probably just that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get into, like, the family aspects yeah, and, of why and he did it. I think, I think it's more but, of the fact of, at the time that he made those comments, he knew he was going to get laughs because of the punchline. Well, and that's what he went for. But and even I don't, I don't personally think that that's bad. Now, I will say this so I don't get any, like, <laughs> bad comments. I completely support the LGBT community. Yeah, me too. And the movement and everything. I fully support any legislation that they bring forward. Yep. But I think going after comedians that stand with them like that, like, especially Kevin Hart, who does stand with the LGBT community. Yep. Why would you go after him? Like well, that? the hard part is like, and is it actually the LGBT community going after him, just, or is it just people on the internet that want to stir up shit? I just wish we could be all like kumbaya, like super happy people. <laughs> That's you know? not like if we could all like just hold hands and be happy, that'd be that'd be the ideal situation. But clearly, that's not where we're at, and I 100 percent agree that change needs to happen. Yeah. And I think the protest, the the out like out speaking, the, the the talking in general. Is, is phenomenal for, for progress. Well, in this week, but, the Senate Democrats rejected a police reform bill from the Republicans, and then the and House Democrats it, it passed one. Well, no, so the Senate passed theirs, the House... The, no, so the Senate, the Senate declined, like, theirs got denied. Okay. And then the House Democrats passed one on their own. Well, but the Republicans are going to deny it now, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, well, that's two things. Okay, again, we're, we're in this point that's of two separation. Things. Exactly. That's one where it's it this world, instead of making the right change and doing the right thing. Yes. it's all yep. about who's right, who's wrong. We need to fix June? it. No, it's who who I think who leads the initiative. Who leads the initiative, or June who gets to put their name on it? Exactly, that's what it is. June twenty twenty went from you know it could have been a great like fuck. We have so much terrible shit going on. Let's unite and make a better world. Yeah, but goddamn, we we politicized it. Mm-hmm. We fucking politicized it, and it's now hey. Fuck the Republicans, they suck. Hey, fuck the Democrats, they suck. And we can't, we can't agree on anything. It's like, we have coronavirus, we have the movements of police reform, we have the movements on just life and LGBTQ, we Gun have reforms, all of those. So much everything stuff on is the a conversation. Right now. But we can't yep. even have that conversation. Like, nope. Granted, thank God, thank God, you and me, we, we we're different people. We are, <laughs> but we can talk about it. We're yeah. mature enough to have that conversation. You know how many people our age are mature enough to have that conversation? Fucking zero, I would say. <laughs> and that's, I, I mean, but that's, I think a lot of people are scared to have the conversation. They're afraid. Are they scared? Or they're are afraid they... of people attacking them. If you ask, yeah. so back in college, I would ask people why don't why don't they talk about politics more? Oh, and it was more like so they don't too. they don't want to cause issues. Well, this was the whole and the idea is why does it need to cause an issue? Exactly. Even if you don't well, issue, like. We don't agree on things. We don't. But at the end of the day, well, I we still love you. You're it. still a good guy. Well, we can talk yes. about it. Exactly. Yes, you're still a good buddy. I don't agree with you on a lot. <laughs> but 
but I trust you and I trust that you're going to make the we best the decisions best that to... you think are the best decisions for you well, and I, only I'm for you. I'm a societal person. I'm not well, more and, for myself. Well, and it, I don't mean it in that way. Yeah. I mean in the sense of like you're not – What's best? You're not voting in my opinion, based off best? of your yeah. party's viewpoint. You're voting off of – what you believe is the right thing. Now, does that mean you vote with party? I, Probably. I vote conservative. Yeah. 100%. Right. But like you also I vote because you know what you're voting for. Yeah. I personally in my Unlike heart. Unlike other people exactly. that get their votes from their parents. In my heart, I am a conservative person. I thought about it. I'm a finance guy. I'm a business guy. Like – When you used to explain yourself up. as a fis- fiscally conservative but socially – To a point, yeah. I mean I, I would love to be social. I think some social programs we have aren't necessarily beneficial or great. Um, so I can't wholeheartedly say like all social and stuff you know what would work I, really I well for, but is if people would be like talk about it bipartisan and, and yeah. like think about get it get reform done that actually makes these programs better exactly so people are happier you're not gonna make everybody happy well but I you think can at least do at enough the end of the day to make things conversations better. yes and absolutely. I don't know if we talked about this last, last podcast or not conversations are what matter yeah you know if 100%. we can talk about it we can move forward. But if we're in this place where we can't talk about this stuff, we can't move forward, we can't think about it, how how are we supposed to move forward as a United States? You know, bringing the United States wow. of America. Wow, big words. Come how are we supposed out. to move forward, though? Like, if we're not united, how can we be the United States? We're not, and that's where I ca- talk about who we elect, who we're putting in office, <laughs> and what is getting done in Washington. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> For how many years, though? I, but the thing is, is it's kind of funny. If you read bills, like, like you'll realize how they just slip little things in. Yeah. So like most of the time, yep. there's not an argument about the main topic. It's, it's an argument little, about the little tiny shit tiny, that they're they're getting out of it. Point fourteen. Yeah. B. Yeah. Uh, I. Yeah. Uh, it's a gun reform bill, but they're talking about stop signs. Oh, they, yeah, they're in like, Article fourteen, exactly. section C. Um, subsection D, like point two hundred. Yeah. Ah, uh, greenhouse effect. Green, like, like what the? That's fuck the is shit they're doing. Guns? That exactly. makes no sense to me. It's, no sense. Hey, to me. two pages for a bill. Thoughts on that? Two a pages bill should be bill. so simple you can read it in five minutes. But the problem it. there is that then it's not detailed enough that there's a lot of leeway. I don't. And that's agree. the. If you look at taxes. Taxes are so intricate because of all. But no one's arguing with taxes. There. No, well, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about like so. Uh, I can't even say that. So like there's stuff where like taxes. there's uh, if you have X amount of cows in X county or X state, you get this tax cut off, cut yeah. right off. You get this like if you get that freaking minutely detailed, this is never gonna work. But if you get to the point where we have a simple bill that everyone can understand and democratically, republicanly vote on, agree on. Yeah, I think that's what we should do, but that, that's not what's going to happen. A 200 bill that we write in two nights is better than a five, you know, uh, page bill. But yeah, no, but back to the comedian stuff, like I, I love, so Dave Chappelle, Sticks and Stones, uh, he talked, I believe it was Sticks and Stones, he talked about the Kevin Hart and the Oscars and not getting it. Um, and his whole thing was, you know, his whole freaking dream was to be, I don't know if he was, I, I quote, if I'm wrong, you know, correct me, but I believe his thing was to be the first African American to host the Oscars, um, and he he got the gig, and then God forbid for whatever fucking reason they go back to his stand up. If it was like some personal thing he said about hey like if my son was gay, um, I'd throw a dollhouse at him. Now the big thing was is at that time that was when LGBT was the the main yeah. topic on everybody's mind. So it was a, it was a very very high but, tense so time. Question, can we not have any more jokes in? No, jokes and, and I think comedians are having that same question. Like, what can I say that won't get me in trouble? Is there any and then you get people like Bill Bill Burr. Yeah. Who just doesn't give a but fuck my anymore. thought is, uh, if, and I think Bill Burr and like Dave Chappelle, and like they have this, I, I mean, Bill Burr talks about this a lot. I've actually recently like come on to him a bit more, but he's like, if I go into a room of 100 people and one person is mad, but 99 people loved it, that's a fucking amazing performance. But that one person goes to a blog, writes about it, and then trashes me. And then, like, uh, everyone else is like, oh, yeah, fuck Bill Burr. So I had a 99% positive rating, but one person has a voice who goes out there and trashes me, and now people are going to rally behind it. I think, definitionally, I did a good job. But that's not the world we live in anymore. And I think that's a very valid statement where if you go in – like, if you go into a comedian uh, or, like, a comedy uh, night – and you go for the sake of comedy. 
and you have a great time. And granted, they might say some edgy stuff. They're fucking comedians, you know? That's the whole that point. The whole point is to cause or, you to feel uncomfortable. Exactly. Or going back to the laugh. South Park stuff. Like, yes. you make satire of the world we're in right now to prove points, to, to prove where we are. Yeah. To ma- if you can make fun of the current place we're at in a positive, reinforcing place, I think that's more positive than just a, a normal conversation if yeah. you can't have one right now. Absolutely. So it's just like. More. Exactly. So it's just like. If, if that's the new norm where we can't agree or we can't have jokes, where does it end? Yeah. Is that good for America? I don't think so. But that's uh, that's my thought. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll have to see where it goes. And ho- hopefully people start realizing that comedians are just out to make you laugh. And Yeah. Like, a lot of the times they give political views mostly because they know they're going to get a laugh of what they say. that's where we're at 23. Right. And yeah. it's easy to make jokes about politics. Look at every oh yeah every night show. Is doing that. Yep. They all are hitting those. Well, Saturday Night marks. Live. I mean, they're not even a skit company anymore. They're just polit- politics. Right. But that's what gets the laughs and that's what exactly. gets what they need. I love, oh, okay, Onion News Network. That's where we all need to go. Just the sad time. Oh, my God. Their stuff's so great. I mean, it's funny, but I love also, when people don't realize that it's, like, fake. Well, I was, they post it on Facebook thinking that people are going to be like, exactly. oh, that's brilliant. Like, I was share. talking to my old CFO. I guess my current CFO, he's, he's about to retire. But I was talking with him, um, I believe, two years ago. And, like, this... From where we had that conversation to where we are now. Yeah. We we're walking back from a lunch, and uh, he's like, you uh, you follow, like, the Onion News Network? I'm like, fuck yeah, I love the Onion News Network. And he's like, yeah, I mean, you know what's kind of scary about, like, that, though? How do you discern what's real and what's not? Like, they're <laughs> almost a reality now. And I'm like, dude, that's genius. It like, is it, brilliant. It, it, well, it's not brilliant. It's scary, I think. I think it's scary how, like... That satire of American life is almost so fucking real it could be a news headline. But I think it's brilliant in the sense of, like, they can write pieces now. Oh, they are geniuses. That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. brilliant. They but, can write a piece and people go, oh, shit, is that real but you know, or I, not? I don't, I, I don't think a lot of people – I don't think enough people follow them nowadays as what they used to. It's like they're on YouTube and stuff. They're great – if you look at their YouTube stuff from seven years ago, fucking hilarious. But – like th- there today, I don't think people understand that yeah. they're satire, which is exactly his point of like satire is so the norm almost, or like, it's so easy for like satire to be confused with reality. Yeah, that's fucking terrifying to me. Yeah, so it's very true. Lately, I have fallen back into the trap of eating out. And especially during this quarantine season, eating out means Postmates, DoorDash, <laughs> Uber Eats, or doing car side to go. Yep. Now, the big thing for me is is it's extremely costly. Yes. It's and, super simple though. But the problem is is that it's good. And it's I always so know, I always know that the food I'm going to put in my mouth that night is delicious. going to be delicious. Yes. Fattening. Yep. <laughs> French fries. Yep. I mean, it's just phenomenal. But I know you're more of a cook at home kind of guy. Yeah, I've been doing pretty good. I mean, except I, our couple canes runs. One, two, 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 two canes in the runs. Two weeks. Um, two in the two weeks living I here. I almost went yep. last night with you. But you did, but I, I you ditched you and which is fine because I, I ate a turkey burger, which is healthy. So you did while I ate chicken tenders. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> well, honestly, today, like I, I got food today just because I was. I mean, I ate lunch at four o'clock. I was so busy at work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was thinking, like, you know, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, like, Canes. Like, what sounds good? Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's and wine. That sounds good to me. So that's, that's what I did. <laughs> did you have Jimmy John's for dinner? I did. Well, for lunch. lunch. Well, but I probably won't. Your lunch at 5 o'clock? Dude, it's, it, this week has been It's the weirdest bitch. thing. At what point in the day can you no longer call it lunch? The second meal is lunch. No, that's <laughs> bullshit. Once well, you hit, like, 3 o'clock. a lot, too, so it's weird. So I guess it's breakfast. You had breakfast at 5 p.m. today. Well, no, I actually had breakfast this morning. What did you have for breakfast? Wait till I had oatmeal and two pieces of toast with uh, strawberry jam. Delicious. Strawberry jam? I actually strawberry do enjoy jam. strawberry jam. I'm a grape guy. I uh, like grape too, but strawberries and nice change every once in a while. Like I said, hey, I, I go to Costco. That's where I buy all my shit. Mm-hmm. Costco didn't have grape jelly. They had a fucking tub of strawberry jelly. It says 66 servings. There is no way in fucking 66 servings. I'm telling you, this is like 200 to 300 servings of jelly. The thing is huge. The thing's as big as your tequila bottle. 
I mean, that's going to that's gonna take you a while to get through. That's what I'm saying. I guess you're not going back to Great Jelly for a while. Two pieces of toast? It's going to take me a year to eat all that. Uh, I did have a question for you. Yep. What did, like, growing up, did your family cook at home a lot, or did you guys eat out a lot? Yep, my mom, uh, we would eat out once during the week, maybe, and then, like, on a Friday or Saturday, but every Sunday we had a family meal, um, steak, potatoes, some veggies. Fucking mm. favorite meal in the entire world to this day. If I was ever on Death World, that's my meal. That's my last meal. It's gotta be cooked by my mom and dad, though. Um, <laughs> hopefully when you're on death row, there's hopefully when I'm not on death. Row. Oh, right, right. Yeah. We don't want you on death row. I'm not planning on going. So. I would prefer you not to, but no, but besides that, like my mom cooked a lot for us. Mm. So, and then towards the end, like junior year, I, I got really big in like, uh, health and like lacrosse. So I, my mom, bless her heart. She uh, packed my lunch for me every morning. Aww. So I had a nice, super freaking hot. I think Shark's mom still makes his lunch for him every day. Well, he lives at home still. He's a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, uh, I I ate super healthy for lunch. I even started cooking my own like dinners when they went out or whatever. So, and that's where I like I, I I'm not like a great cook because I'm. You're right. You're not a great, great cook. I know. No, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a good cook just because I He I'm actually can cook some really mean green beans. I know that's super weird and super I've sidecar. Been a lot of good shit. But, like, your green lie. beans are phenomenal. Well, I've been cooking since five, six, seven, seven years now I've been cooking. Wow. Um, yeah, so 16. You know, know what I can cook seven years ago? What? Cereal. I could pour the cereal <laughs> in the bowl, then pour the milk on top, and half the time I'd overfill it with milk, and then my <laughs> cereal would fall over the sides of the fucking bowl. I've never had that problem. Um... Well, no, no, you don't have that problem because then you just take your hand and you cup it around the bowl and you scoop the cereal up on a mountain and then you eat where the... You know what you can do, And then do, you though? just drop it down. Well, so I know you got to put the cereal in first and the milk second. But just get put, a bigger bowl? No, no, put Because I've had people in. recommend Put that. some cereal in and then put the milk in. Right. And if you put a little too much, okay, but you just put a little of cereal. Then when you're done with that cereal and you want more, put a second batch of cereal in. But I like having two servings in the bowl at all times. Why? Why not do one and then another? Well, why pour the box twice? Why not? That's a lot of effort for cooking. You're spilling cereal. everywhere. No, I cup it with my hand. You know, that closed hand. So dumb. You cup it until it gets low enough, and then it doesn't fall okay, out. But here's anymore. my th- listen to this though. Listen to this, so especially with Cheerios, Fruit Loops, yeah. or like some like really like good flavor, like very sugary, not very healthy, like cereals. Of course, yeah, Captain you, Crunch, uh, exactly. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Exactly. Oh heck yeah! You, uh, I, I got a question for you about that. In a okay, second, but you put the first batch in, and you know it gets soggy towards like the last bite. Oh yeah, too. You put that's how Frosted Flakes in. is well, too. Then the milk, you drink the milk at the end, and oh, it's just it has that flavoring super in freaking it. flavor. Oh, yeah. Maybe we should do another podcast. Exactly. On examining how to properly eat cereal. How to properly eat cereal, but then also best how to brands. best cereal milk at the end. Yeah. Like yeah. We can, oh, we can, okay. We can test the milk at the end and tell tell okay. them about the and flavors. The <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, my question to you. Yes. Toasted cr- cinnamon toast crunch, box or bag? Have you had either one? Well, the bo- the box is the is the main brand, the name yep. brand, and the bag. Have you is, had both? Well, yes. Preference. The box. Bag. 100%. I'm sorry, no. I think I'm also bag, a brand guy. I, think I hate to say, I hate to admit better. that, but I am I a brand better guy. Quality, better so taste. when I know I'm eating something that's not that brand, like if I'm eating off brand Honey Nut Cheerios. Like honey hey, Cheerios or whatever the I'll fuck say, they call it. Yeah. Like I know it's not honey nut Cheerios, and I know it's not going to taste as good. I'll say RC Cola, Coca Cola, Fruit Coca-Cola Loops. All day. Fruit Loops go either way. It doesn't matter what brand of Fruit Loops you buy; they're I always going to taste. The See, whole brand is... Fruit Loops are my favorite. I uh, dude, this is we're we're opposites. We're I, exact opposites. But there's only one right person here, and it is no, that's it is absolutely me. not true at all. Yeah, no, your your opinions don't matter on hey, this. We'll one. put a poll out there. All right? <laughs> I guarantee you, the bag's gonna win. <laughs> From our no, the bag is not. Yeah, the cheap asses are gonna vote for the bag. No, the people the that know the people that know quality I will vote it. for the bag. I, for have, the I used to do the box, then I went to the bag, and I did the bag for about a year or two, and I went back to the box one time, and it just it tastes like cardboard. It now I will give you you get more cereal in the bag than you I'm get not worried the box. about quantity. I'm worried See, about that's, quality. That's what I am because I gotta fill that I'm bowl up about every quality. time. Quality, quality of the bag is better quality than the box. Hundred <laughs> percent. Bullshit. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I don't know if I agree with that. What what type of milk? I'm not a big milk guy anymore. I don't eat cereal. I, I think I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't That's eat milk. Or drink milk. <laughs> eat milk. You eat milk. I do. Yeah. When I was growing up, my family did not cook very often. Yeah. We do family meals like on Sundays or like Labor Day, 
But with um, just us really busy and yeah. constantly going to sporting events and things like that, or sports events for yeah. my siblings and me, um, eating out was a very easy thing to do, exactly. which probably wasn't the best thing for us. Yep. Um, obviously, when it comes to cooking, it comes down to practice and actually knowing yeah. what you're doing, which is something that I'm really getting into now. Um, I can make a mean grilled oh. chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> I can. A mean grilled chicken sandwich. I can, I can season that grilled chicken like – no other. I can make it taste like a restaurant style grilled chicken. Honestly, the tip there is to just add a little butter to the pan, and it just soaks right in, and mm, it's Here's so good. Tip. But Get it ruins seasoning. the grilled chicken. But Here's my tip. Get good seasoning. There you go. Seasoning That's is literally everything. all. If you over season, you can fuck it if up. You, if you under season, exactly. it's bland as shit and it's awful. If you can cook the product to yep. the proper temperature, to the proper whatever. So, like, if you cook chicken, there's also no shame in following recipes. No, that's follow a recipe. That's, that's the whole point of a recipe. Practice. But, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's the best. But no, if you can get a chicken where you can cook it where it's juicy in the middle, but it's all white. There's not any pink left. All right, you're halfway there. The other half, put seasoning on it. Then you're done. Like it, it's it's not that hard. It's a cook People steak. flip meat too often. That is like, a huge thing. You, you yeah. Cook chicken on low steak? heat. You don't flip steak. No. Yeah. Medium medium to low heat on chicken. You wait five to six minutes. You flip it. You wait five to six minutes. Cut into the middle. See if it's pink in the middle. If it yeah. is, wait another minute on that side. Flip it for thirty seconds. Take it off. There's yeah. no reason to overflip it because yeah. all you're doing, especially with burgers, is you're just having all, all of that juice, juice run yeah. right out yeah. because you're breaking up the outside crust See, I'm, I'm that weird. holds that juice. I in. guess here's a good question. I'm really weird with this. My veggies burnt. Love burnt veggies. I mean, just a you like that crunch on huh? the outside. Yeah, I like if it's a pepper. You know, the inside part of it, like juicy, it's like it's, it's yeah. intact, but the, the freaking skin on the outside, black. Lo- asparagus, freaking, now, you bite I down like, and it turns to ash. I my love My favorite my thing about your green beans crunchy. is when you give it a little bit of that, you throw them in the oven for a little bit and burn them. A little, little crunch. Little yeah. brown, you brown them up a little bit well, and it's still not, delicious. But they're still like, they're juicy and everything. That's very there. true. Yeah. Well, but I'm not opposed. I mean, I'll eat a, like... Black, like a, I, I'll eat charcoal asparagus. Like I love burnt veggies. I'm weird. <laughs> I know like three or four other people that are like that with me. Um, I don't know. So I mean, you gotta like what you like. Obviously, you're wrong about the cereal, but it's fine. <laughs> I forgive you for that. You can stay <laughs> in the house. It's all personal. Preference. You don't have to you know leave. I mean? It's just um, whatever you like. Can't wait so. to be quarantined with you. It is what it is. You know, exactly. the big thing here is check out our social media for that poll. On if you're a bag cereal guy, no, it's a bag cinnamon toast crunch. It's very. Specific. We're only talking about cinnamon very toast crunch. Very specific. Okay, bag, bag cinnamon toast cinnamon crunch, toast crunch or the right answer, the box cinnamon toast That's crunch. Not the right answer. But I'm hey, sorry. I think you're wrong. Check our poll. I think you're wrong. Yeah, check us out. Uh, yes. Tell us what you think. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for daily content, polls, reviews, and more. We have a link to our website in the bios. Send us your recommendations via DM or email us at tequila or wine at gmail.com. Check for polls or send us recommendations for future content. Tune in next week and remember, stay tipsy.